What did Jesus say? That's right. I am the light of the world. Okay, we're recording. We're starting our collective worship with some music. Can you remember the composer of this piece of music? <laughs> Who knows the name of the composer of that piece of music? Hands up. Yep, you. I can't hear you from here. The composer was Vivaldi. Now that piece of music was called The Four Seasons by Vivaldi. Here's Vivaldi on the right, holding the violin. He was alive, composing music at the same time as Johann Sebastian Bach. Right, let's start our collective worship. Good morning, everyone. So this week in collective worship, our theme is justice. And today... I'd like to talk to you about fairness. Do you think animals understand fairness? Here's David Attenborough to tell us more. A pot of hazelnuts and the flint that's needed to open the lid. You need both to get a nut, but they're separated by a see-through barrier. Vulcan has the rock, but can't reach the nuts. Virgil has the nuts, but knows he can't eat them without a rock. Vulcan quickly offers the tool. He must hope Virgil is smart enough to open the lid and fair enough to cut him in on the spoils. Virgil is struggling. He doesn't have his friend's skill. And Vulcan is getting impatient. The flint is finally through the lid, but can Virgil be trusted to share the nuts? With Vulcan out of reach, it must be tempting to take the lot. Three nuts, a fair share. Vulcan and Virgil have used teamwork to beat the system. But can Capuchins really have a sense of fair play? 
What amazing cooperation and fairness. What about children? I got nothing here. Half of mine, and we could help give half of his the legacies. No, it's not fair. <laughs> hey, wait, Mister. Oh, marvelous piece. I can't. Yeah. You have to snap it. Yes. That reminds me of the South African story Ubuntu. Charlie used to visit a remote village far from the city to work. He used to observe the children and take photos of them. He loved being surrounded by children. He spent time with them every day. One day, he decided to give them a gift. He bought some chocolates and gift wrapped them. He called all the children to play a game. Whoever reaches the tree first, gets the gift. The children waited for his signal to start. Can you guess what happened next? To his surprise, the kids held each other's hands, ran together towards the tree. They all reached at the same time. They distributed the chocolates evenly among themselves. Charlie asked them, why did you all run together? One of you could have run fast and had all the chocolates. A little girl said, Ubuntu, how could any or any one of us be happy if others were sad? It's not about you. It's not about me, it's about us, together as one, Ubuntu. That's really powerful. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about us, together. And if you'd like this prayer to be your prayer, it's Amen at the end, you're welcome to look at the candle flame where you can put your hands and your eyes together. Dear God, we pray for people living in countries where life is unfair. We pray for justice and fairness in every country of the world. Amen. Hmm. I'm looking at these dates, children. And Bach and Vivaldi were both born over 300 years ago. No one here was around 300 years ago. So how do we know anything about them? 
How do historians know about the past? How do historians know about the past? For example, who invented the first modern day steam locomotive? Well, we know that was Robert Stevenson and his Stevenson's rocket locomotive, built in 1829. How do we know this? We have the letters Robert wrote to his friend Henry Booth, where he describes the initial testing of the rocket locomotive. Then, there are written accounts of the Rainhill Trials, the grand competition that the rocket was designed and built for. We have printed handbills of the contest, which show images of the locomotives involved, including the rocket, and newspapers with first-hand reports on the day's events. Historians can then take all these and consider them alongside other relevant information they have, such as books by other authors, specialist articles, and even looking at the artefacts themselves. In this case, the original Stevenson's rocket has been preserved and is on display at the London Science Museum. Historians can also share and discuss information they've found with other historians, who, in turn, can go on and share what they've learnt with others. Mmm! And historians and musicians know all about Vivaldi's music because he wrote over 500 concertos. Here's one of them. This is actually the musical writing of Vivaldi. A great historical and musical artefact from the past. Well, that concludes our collective worship for today. Remember, work hard, be kind, look after yourselves. I'll see you around school. Yeah, that walk's tied the pups out. <laughs> <laughs>